All right, Kirk, so, so just take me through this year. What, what's this year been like as you change defensive coordinators and just watching this entire defense come together from your perspective? It's cool, man. Um, you know, we started out the season a little slow. Uh, you know, we, our defense is a really aggressive defense. We play fast, and obviously when you play fast, mistakes are going to happen. Um, so, you know, when I, you know, I was telling everyone earlier in the year, when you can find the blend to play fast and, you know, play assignment football at the same time, when you can blend that, you're going to be a really dangerous group. And, uh, we, you know, we have some young guys on the defense as well, you know, stepping into their own and filling in. Um, so you're starting to see the results of, uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, countless hours for, you know, fixing what was wrong and, and starting to play assignment football as well as playing fast. When did you feel like it really clicked for this defense for the first time? Uh, versus, uh, probably, I mean, probably versus the, the probably, I don't know. I mean, I think I mean, we, we played all right, all, you know, all year, but I mean, really the best game we played so far was against Navy and then obviously last week against Virginia. That, that Navy game's always got something unique about it. Like, what, what does that Navy game represent for you? I love playing against Navy. I mean, those dudes are tough. You know, they're real hard-nosed, you know, gritty guys. And, and it's an honor to play against someone who's going to be serving your country in a couple of years. Um, you know, it's great for me. They run the ball every play, so I love it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking about the back-to-back -back of the Navy game and then the Virginia game inside of that room right now. That's got to be pretty two, two pretty impressive performances to go back-to-back -back with. Correct. But we talk about all the time, you know, the job's not finished. We're not where we want to be at the end of the day yet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Take me back to Pittsburgh, man. Growing up in Pittsburgh, what does it mean to you to be sort of Pittsburgh tough and to grow up from that area? You know, it's uh, you know, I kind of carry I kind of carry that blue collar mentality on my shoulders every day, and you know, kind of incorporate it to everything I do. Um, you know, it's uh, on your way to school in the morning. On the morning, you see, you know, dump trucks and guys going to the gas station and filling up their coffee and getting stuff for their lunch boxes. It's kind of a blue collar town, and you you know. A lot, of, a lot of construction workers in the area. I grew up in a lot of police officers, a lot of school teachers, you know. Um, but, yeah, it, it's cool, man. It's a cool town to, to grow up in, and it definitely, you know, molds you into a, a great young man, hardworking young man. Yeah, and your dad was so awesome, too, really become like a legendary figure in my mind, your pops. How, how does he motivate you? How did he – how was he raise you there in Pittsburgh? I was raised tough, man. I, uh, you know, I, he expected nothing else from me but to be tough and uh, – you know, be kind of, you know, fall into, you know, his kind of blue collar work, work ethic, you know, between my mom and my dad, but they both work extremely hard. And, um, you know, I saw that growing up at a young age and, you know, I always admired that about both of them. What sports did you play growing up? I wrestled and uh, I played football and that was, that was the extent. I mean, I, everyone plays baseball and soccer when they're a little kid, but I didn't actually, the only sports I was like serious about was wrestling and football. How do wrestling and football blend? Uh, I mean, they're good. They're great, especially, you know, feeling uh, for your balance, you know, kind of feeling somebody, you know, wrestling with someone, you kind of, um, you kind of you learn to counteract someone's balance and kind of learn to counteract your balance, but push it out against one another. And uh, wrestling is great for football because it helps with the fundamentals of tackling. Mm -hmm. So for somebody who's never played nose tackle, which is the vast majority of humanity, Explain some of the hand fighting. What, what's the key to the hand fighting that goes on down there in the trenches? You got to be fast. You got to be low and you got to play nasty. Um, you know, that's what I always say. And uh, you get a lot of double teams. Uh, you know, when you get a one-on-one -on -one block, you got to make the most of it. Um, yeah, I mean, you got to play. You gotta, your hands got to be fast immediately. As soon as you, as soon as the ball snapped, you got to be fast with your hands. And uh, you got to be quick and you got to be violent. So, when you start feeling the double team, what's the key? Like, what's the key when you're getting doubled? Just being low and just, you know, kind of having that mentality. You're just – I always – it's kind of cliche, but I always tell myself I'm you know, the most dangerous guy out here. You know, if you want to do that to me, go ahead. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is the goal then to not move? Is that is that really the goal when you're getting doubled, just stand your ground? I mean, for the majority of the people, yeah, but I like to, like – I like to make plays off the double team. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing to get double teamed and not get moved. It's another thing to get double teamed and make plays. Yeah. Well, shit. I mean, if that's what you do so well. So, how how is your perspective on Notre Dame football evolved as you've gone through this program and now that you're towards the end of your Notre Dame career? My perspective on the program itself. Yeah. 
it's awesome, man. I mean, it, it, there's a great culture here in this building, and what Coach Kelly has uh, has built here, and all the support staff and everybody. Um, it's great culture in the building, um, on the field. You know, there it's you know a lot of no nonsense, hardworking individuals, and you kind of what you see is what you get with Coach Kelly, and uh, you know he's a great guy, a great role model, and um, it's been an honor to play under him, and you know it's been an honor to play under Coach Lee and. Uh, you know, Coach Marcus Freeman, the time we've had this year, and you know, Coach Alston, and then all the Jays I've had since I've been here, and Coach Bayless, you know, he's out molding me. He's had a big, big uh, part in my uh, development here. Does the appreciation for the grind evolve as you grow up? You no doubt, no doubt. And I find myself challenging myself more as I grow up and as I'm working out by myself. Hmm. hmm. How so? Uh so during quarantine. Uh, I, I worked out at, at my high school gym and uh, I didn't have a training partner, but like, I, I've like, you know, the days where you go in and you, and you probably work out. And so, you know, the, some, some of the days you go in and you're not feeling well, right. And you, you know, those are the days that you kind of define who you are, you know what I'm saying? And you can either choose to, you know, go through the motions or you can get better that day and, and work harder than you did the day before when you were feeling good. Um, you know, I, you know, I give myself a lot of positive reinforcement, self-talk while I was in there too. And, um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you're viewed as one of the truest and purest leaders on this team. So who, who was the leader you grew up learning from when you got to Notre Dame? Who was the best leader that you were around? Um, probably, uh, I don't, I don't want to say this because it's going to get into his head and I'm always knocking on him and stuff, but, uh, <laughs> uh, Audio Gundeji was a great leader, worked extremely hard, um, was a lot was a lot of no nonsense worked extremely hard knew how to talk to everybody um robert hainsey was a great leader um you know ian book was a great leader quentin nelson was a great leader mike mcglinchy was a great leader we had a ton of great leaders um but the two i can really think of in my head are robert hainsey and audio gadeji they're both dudes that work extremely hard like myself and are blue collar and um show up to sit and be the same guy every day What's it been like from your perspective to watch this offensive line come together this year and do so playing some young guys? It's awesome. It's awesome. You know, they balance the, you know, they had a little bit of trouble at first and now they're coming into fruition and, and they're, they're playing really well. Um, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, don't see it every play, but I see it every play, you know, guys like Kane Madden and Jared Patterson and Christoph figured, you know, they're, laying, they're actually laying dudes out on the field where they're, they're pulling or they're coming down the line and it, Coke and someone. I mean, it's really cool to see. How about for Joe Alt? When did you first realize Joe Alt may be different as a true freshman? Joe Alt's a beast. You know, Joe, <clears throat> Joe Alt and Blake Fisher and Rocco Spindler, they're all going to be great offensive linemen here. Um, Joe, Joe Alt's going to be three and out. Uh, Blake Fisher's going to be three and out. Uh, Rocco Spindler could, has the potential to be three and out. Um, but they're both, I mean, all three of them are really good. But Joe Alt, I knew Joe Alt was different when he was. Uh, during the, the summer conditioning, I think Joe Al was around 310, but during summer conditioning, he was up towards the front of the pack, uh, you know, right next to Isaiah Foskey when we were doing conditioning. Wait, running sprints? You're saying he's 310 pounds, but running sprints, he was at the front of the pack? Yeah. Next to Foskey? Next to Foskey, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Is this dude a yeah. hooper or what? Like, where's that athleticism come from? I think, yeah, I, I don't know if he was a hooper or not. I mean, he was recruited here to be a, a tight end. Um hmm. So I, I think that has something to do with it. But yeah, I mean he's he's a freak. He's a beast. He one of the things he did during camp was we were doing one on ones and uh he he slipped, but when he slipped, he did like a spin move on the ground and like didn't hit the ground and like kept his feet and like continued to block the guy he was gunning against. I mean he's he's a, he's a freak. He is a freak. So when when you talk to these young guys, especially these young guys who are having to play now. What, what advice do you give them about what it means to represent this program or really what it means in terms of just making sure that this team can go as far as humanly possible, potentially even a trip to the playoffs or a championship? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I tell them they're stepping into a role that's bigger than themselves. And, um, you know, you kind of carry on the torch of the tradition that has been given to you by guys that have been here in the past. And, you know, you're in a past torch for guys here in the future. Um I like Joe. I, before every game, you know, you know, if if 
there's a good a defensive lineman he's going against, I always kind of get up in his grill, and I'm always kind of like, you know, like, you know, come on, Joe. Like, and he's always like cool, cold face, stone face, like, like yes, sir. Like, and he goes out there and he delivers. That, that's got to be pretty awesome for you at this point in your career to be able to have those conversations. How does that resonate with you being able to be that older guy now? It's cool, man. Like, I, I always looked up to those guys, and, and, you know, I'm finally in a position where I get to be one of those guys. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you go back to Pittsburgh, how, how did all your friends growing up view the success and the career that you've built at Notre Dame? Uh, I mean, that would be something that you, you'd have to ask them. I mean, the, I mean, to my face, I mean, they'd probably, you know, you know, mess around. And, and you know, <laughs> yeah. my friends, are, they're like, uh, you know, me and my friends, we have a, a funny relationship. They only bring up the bad things that have happened to you. Know, you know, <laughs> yeah. You know, like like me getting pancakes when I was a junior in high school by you know getting triple teamed or something. They'll send in a video of that. And then they'll never you know they'll never commemorate me on my highlights of my career. You know they're always they always keep me humble and stuff. And I really appreciate about them. But I mean they tell you the same thing. I've always been a leader and I've always been a lead by example kind of guy and um, hardworking type of person. I'm glad you got friends just like mine, man. Kurt, we really appreciate you taking some time. It's been so awesome watching your career. And what you've meant, just as forget about football, what you've meant to that building, what you meant to Notre Dame. So thanks for coming on, man, and Appreciate keep it, it rolling the rest of the way, no doubt. I'm good. Take care. All right, Kurt. See you, pal. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.